haven't always performed in nice stuff like this. My first show was at a strip club. <laughs> Miami, Florida, years ago, man. How Brad brought me to the stage, that's a professional introduction. That's how you're supposed to bring somebody to the stage. My first introduction was terrible. The dude was like, y'all ready to see some titties? <laughs> they said, yeah. He said, y'all ready for some booty shaking and gesticulating? They said, yeah. He said, all right, but first. <laughs> This brother say he a comedian or something. I don't know who it is. It's terrible. I'm trying to better myself last year. You know what I was trying to do? I want to learn Spanish. Yeah, I gotta learn Spanish because my face is confusing. <laughs> People come up to me speaking Spanish and get mad when I don't speak it, man. Especially Dominican brothers because they think that I am also a Dominican brother. They get mad. They be like, well, hop it. <laughs> Papa, what happened to you, Papa? Why, why you don't speak it, Papa? What happened? I'm like, I'm stupid, man. I can't remember all these words. I tried to download the number one language book on Audible. It's called Learn Spanish with Paul Noble, right? Now, I was being racist. I thought that the man name was No Blade. <laughs> so if I'm gonna learn Spanish, I expect it to be from a Latino brother. The dude is British, man. <laughs> he English as hell, he stole my damn money. As soon as I turned it on, I said, he got my dumb ass. As soon as I turned it on, he was like, hello. <laughs> or should I say, hola. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paul Noble, and I'm going to teach you Spanish. I'm like, man, you speak extra English. What the hell is that? <laughs> You sound like Harry Potter spells in here, man. <laughs> He's like, yo soy, repeat enough to me, yeah? Yo soy Americano, okay? That translates to I'm a tourist, please overcharge. <laughs> Trying to get better, man. You know what I did over the last couple years, man? I got a closer relationship with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah but God, God is good, but God will mess up your comedy. <laughs> Comedy 15 years. Here's the thing, they teach you how to do comedy. When you first start writing comedy, you're supposed to write from a place of hatred. That's how you start. Yeah, you're supposed to complain. If you watch a lot of comedy, because that unites people. Hatred, it, it make, gets people on your side quicker. That's messed up, but it's true. It's true, that's how you, you know. But when you love God, you don't hate nothing, man. Love everybody, I see God in everybody. People be like, don't you hate such and such? I'll be like, he all right. <laughs> he just don't know what to do with his pain, man. You know, people be like, don't you hate it when you get on an airplane? Hell no, nah. airplane's a miracle from God. That thing be flying. <laughs> no, nah, when you get on the airplane, there's a baby on the plane crying. Man, that baby was just in heaven, man. Now you're on a plane to Cleveland with your dumb ass. Of course the baby. <laughs> Let the baby cry, man. You a maniac? I love God. I say that in front of Satan and five other white men. <laughs> <laughs> No, look, I'm not gonna convince everybody in here of the you know, existence of God and that you're a little piece of God and all of that. I, I ain't come here as an eight minute comedy set. I'm not coming to convince you that. But what I will convince you of is that you are blessed just to be having this experience. And yeah, this is an experience, that's what it is. And to be having this experience in the time that you're having it, okay? Because I know what I'm talking about. I did some Googling. <laughs> the richest man in the world 100 years ago was a man named Andrew Carnegie. Do you know that your car goes faster than Andrew Carnegie's cars? Do you know that? That your house is colder or warmer, however you like it, than his house was? You've seen more pornography <laughs> by accident than Andrew Carnegie saw in his life. You're blessed. Just live in the time you live in. Somebody tried to argue me. They were like, but Sean, Andrew Carnegie could have sex with anybody he wanted to back in the day. He could have sex with anybody. We gonna keep it real in here. They didn't start making good looking people till about 50 years ago. <laughs> Talking about my family too, one nothing but ugly ass people. Now, they say Cleopatra was fine and I can believe that because Egyptian women do look good but I can't trust no hieroglyphic stick figure foolishness, okay? <laughs> The only picture they had of a good looking woman for centuries, good looking person, was uh, uh, the Italian lady, M Mona Lisa, right? <laughs> and we gonna keep it real in here. 
Mona Lisa was all right. <laughs> Mona Lisa wouldn't even get a hundred likes nowadays, man. <laughs> and come to find out, did you know this, brother? It was a man the whole time. Did you know this? It was a catfish. It's true. It was, yeah, it was Leonardo DiCaprio in a wig. A lot of people don't know this. He's been jacking off this dude for centuries. Tricking people. It's not right. Yeah, man. God is changing me, man. I was real, like I've been doing this for a while, man. I've started off real aggressive on stage, man. I kind of still am. But like I started off, like my comedy started off with mama jokes. That's how I learned how to tell jokes. Uh, my first ever joke, my cousin came in the house. He was 10 years old. I was only seven. I never heard a joke before. He was like, hey, Sean, your mama's so fat, her blood types bacon. That's pretty good for a 10-year-old. That's not bad. You could say bacon grease, but that was pretty good, you know? I was seven. I didn't understand jokes yet. I thought the jokes were just hurtful information. <laughs> that's what it sounded like to me, you know? So when he said that, I was like, oh yeah? Well, your daddy's on crack, which is true. <laughs> Uncle CJ's on crack and that's his daddy. Now the thing about children who falls on crack, that's not funny to them, you understand? <laughs> he got very mad, he was like, hey dog, you better pipe down. And I said, you should tell your daddy that. that was, <laughs> oh, forget him, man. Forget him, he talking about my mama, man. And I love my mama. Let me tell you something. Your mama is the first person that gave you confidence. I said, everybody in here, I know what I'm talking about because I got messed up teeth. My teeth crooked. But your mama don't fix what's wrong with you. She just make you feel better about it. I came home crying. I said, Ma, the kids tease me at school every time I smile. She said, let me tell you something, baby. People who smile, who have nice teeth, make people happy. But people who smile, who have crooked teeth, give people hope. <laughs> I said, oh snap, man. I'm out here giving people hope. I didn't know that, man. I went to school the next day smiling like a mother. And this boy seen me say, hey, man, your teeth messed up, man. I said, shut up, boy, I give you hope. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope you shut your damn mouth, too. <laughs> yeah, man. Got married this year, too. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, yeah, man. Excited. The black love. Yeah, that's what it is. Black, black love is when black people love each other. That's what they call it. Black love. Strong black love. That's what I'm talking about. What do y'all, what do y'all call it when white people do this? <laughs> Just call it regular love, you son of a bitch. <laughs> call it the Green Bay Boogie, man. The Salt Lake City Slide. That's, what call. That's good. I like all love, man. All love is good. But it's especially hard for black men to get married nowadays because they got all these lies. Talking about black men are not monogamous. That's not true. It's not, man, they took a survey. I got the magazine in the car. I'm going to let y'all read it. It say that less than 5% of black men cheat during the course of relationship making us the least likely race. Finally, proof positive that black men do not participate in surveys. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody asked me nothing, man. I messed that up. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Keep it going for Brad, man. Thank you.